Ashley, random thought, go. Uh, if uh, if you if you me had to uh, pick a coffee that most represents you, what would it be? That's so basic. You can't. You can't. Okay, okay, you okay, can't okay. judge me okay. on that. I would be a iced. Can I just say my own drink? That oh, represents my. you, your personality. Okay. 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 I would be a definitely iced. Interesting. Um, Is it because you're hot all the time? <laughs> don't yeah. I know it, girl. Um, I would be, I like my, I would be an iced vanilla latte. Because <laughs> once you have a little of me, <laughs> you'll want a latte more. <laughs> a latte? <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> Oh, shoot. What about you? What about you? Oh, me too? I thought that was it. Uh, I feel like I would would be a smooth... Oh, dear. (laughs) Uh, Like, warm with, like, hints of of, uh, nuttiness to it. Uh, Drip. (laughs) Nutty because you're nuts? No. Then why? Flavor. Oh. Smooth criminal. <laughs> <laughs> that was so bad. Guys, I'm Dude, really not good. You no, described as talk. a criminal let me talk. is just funny. Oh my god. I I am so bad at coming up with like these little like off the wall random thoughts. Taryn's so good at them, and I'm always like, well then that can just be your thing. Like you can start us every time. And I, I actually, I will say though, I'm very shocked with how you were able to just like boom, I, because I, I had to, because you called me out. And so I if I to. call you out enough, see what I, I don't need like to do, because my head literally, I'm one of those people, and it's has always been this way. You ask me a question like that, like really quick on the spot, my mind goes blank, and I don't mean yeah, no, blank. I get that. I mean every, even how I speak, like it leaves yeah. me. I don't know how That's to. That's like when people are like, "What's your favorite movie?" And you're like, "Yeah,", uh, or yeah. They're, they're like, "Who's your favorite band right now?" I'm like, uh, bl- bl- or they're like. Oh, that I love that movie. Who's that actor again? I know that actor. Yeah. But it's gone. It's completely gone. And I can't think of it. It sucks you. every single time. It's my problem is I have a thousand random thoughts a day. Mm-hmm. Like how many times are we sitting in the car and I'll just be like, Hey Ashley, do you think charcoal was ever eaten by someone and yeah. they died? And then she'll just be like, Why, Taryn? And I'm like, I don't know. I just thought of it. And she always tells me. Save it for the podcast, and I forget every time. So I need like a list. I need list. to write this down. Every time you have something, I should be the one to write it down. I feel and then like you could good. use it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. Now I'm letting you know. I'm it's doing up that for about grabs. something else. Actually, I yeah. had a talk with Alicia about how I don't act my age. That's fine. No, I know. I know that. Uh, but I was I like, <laughs> I was like, I, I mean, you know, now that I'm officially thirty, <laughs> I. Should maybe start acting like a 30 year old sometimes nah. in some ways, in some in ways, some ways. Okay. for example, uh, I told her this because I noticed we were walking to coffee and I was, I want to use the word trudging. Trudging. Yeah. Okay. I was walking like a child. Like it was ridiculous. My, I was walking very lazily. My head okay. was like looking down. My shoulders were hunched. My legs were just kind of like not dragging. Cause were you like in a mood? No, I was literally, I was just, for no trudging. reason, trudging. And I was, in my head, I was like, a 30-year-old wouldn't walk like this. Like a 30-year-old person, stand up tall. So and so is, I wrote down, like, I made a list of how to act my age. <laughs> and one of them, the first one says, don't, don't trudge. trudge. <laughs> Guys, if you've ever wondered, there is an age limit to trudging, and it's 29. Yes. 29? No, as of 30, no more trudging. Okay. Not I don't me. have, oh my gosh, it's 4.44. Whoa. If you guys don't know, I'm obsessed with the number four. So every time it's 4.44 and I see it, I get really excited because it's my favorite minute of the day and I'm spending it with you She's all. obsessed with four. And for example, we were playing a game called the voting game up at the cabin a few <laughs> weeks ago. And True. she got mad at me because I got the number four and she yeah. was actually upset and yeah. wanted to switch. And I could tell, and I was like, "No, we're in a circle. It's fine. You're you're a different number. Let me you it's fine. stick with it." So it's fine. That's I how much you want to get the number four, like a tiny, tiny one tattooed somewhere. Mm, I can see that. 
Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Um, well, welcome to today's episode. Hello. We are freaking doing it in January. We really are. Um, I hope you all are killing it because... Because. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> I literally, like... I just, my whole face, I started staring at your water bottle. Wait, and did I was your like, mind go blank? I didn't know how to recover. That's what happens to me when you call me out and say, random thought. Yeah. You know what I've noticed too? You, I can't interrupt you, but you interrupt me all the time. I feel like we've talked about this or I'm having deja vu. I feel like we have talked about this yeah. on the podcast before. Like you can't do it. Even if I say something funny, you can't laugh about it. Like you just keep going. Cause my I'll lose my thought and yeah. then it's gone forever. You do lose your, I feel like you, cause when you interrupt me, I'll comment on what you're saying and then instantly pick up in the same exact place in my sentence. Yeah. I don't know how I do it. Yeah. Probably because I only care about what I'm saying. <laughs> just kidding. Full circle, she's a narcissist. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> Well, welcome to the episode. Uh, you know, I feel like we're just, we're starting to get back to our normal flow. Yeah, holidays um, were rough for us. I'm gonna be real. Uh, yes. I fell off the grid in many yes. ways. I think uh, food being one of them. Activity level dropped down way low. Didn't do much. I vegged out, and yeah. I think because of that, coming back in January was a little just like, ooh, will we make it? Yeah, <laughs> well, no one knew for sure, but we're doing great. Hopefully, you guys are too. Yeah, no, I hope everyone's doing great. Again, we love fresh starts and we love January. Mm -hmm. um, before we get into our stories, I have a tearing it up. Oh, praise the Lord, yeah. please. I We didn't do one last time. I was upset. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. We need, we need to tear it up in our life. This one tricked me a little because it was kind of scary. Ooh. And then I was like, what am I reading? And then I was like, oh, I get it. It's oh, funny. I'm so yeah. excited. Okay. For those of you that don't know, Tearing It Up is a short story, embarrassing story, awkward situation yeah. that you can send in um, for us to read. Taryn, my co-host over there, is really good and has <laughs> a lot of these awkward situations in her life. And that's why it's called Tearing It Up. So if you have Tearing one, please DM us, email us, send it in. Yeah. We would love to share it with everyone. You know, it really is the first time in my life I've felt loved and accepted for who I am because yeah. you all are freaking weirdos too. <laughs> and it's hard for me to describe. I literally just was having this conversation with um, a guy on a dating app because I'm trying to date. Um, Look at her. Look and at her it, he was like, Threading. he said something like, oh... <laughs> I can't. See, how do you just roll past my comments? I That's all I hear. And I'm like, that was funny. <laughs> She's like to. thriving. I have to. Okay. My thought will leave. Anywho. Um, and he was like, you know, I was like, what are you doing on this thing? You know, that cliche answer question you have to like ask everyone and he was like you know just trying to find someone as weird as me and I was like okay well I'm weird but like what kind of weird are you yeah. <laughs> because there's so there's many weird, different kinds and then there's weirder and then it's like oh that's very like weird. do you save your cat poop or do Ew. you like are you weird like you fall and do weird stuff like me see that I would I would categorize as klutzy fall yeah do weird but stuff actually, like that? That's klutzy. You know that's not the only <laughs> level to my weirdness. I understand, but specifically, if we're talking about that kind of stuff, it's klutzy. It's yeah. not weird. I definitely think I'm klutzy. Mm -hmm. I also think very weird, and I say things that normal people probably wouldn't. Probably. But that's why we have tearing it up, so mm -hmm. everyone else can you know, make me feel less. Anyways, okay. You're not so, alone, that's what she's saying. She says, hey, y'all, I'm Taylor. I said that y'all so well. Hey, Taylor. Yeah, you did. Did you hear me? Where are you from? Okay. Me? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, first, I love the podcast, and I love y'all. <laughs> and I, I'm going to read this sentence as it is because I know it's going to bother you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ew. She said, and like Taryn, I'm a major crime junkie. <laughs> Ooh, why would I'm that bother you? Because I'm a crime junkie too, and she brought me into this world. I will and admit. I really brought her into this world. But I'm gonna take all but the I credit. I wasn't upset at that. I was just upset that I wasn't a crime junkie. Yeah. Also, now she's the original. I have no problem admitting that you got me into podcasts. You got me into everything. Are you staring into the camera? I'm just staring into nothing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, okay. My boyfriend and I recently moved into a house nestled back at the base of a mountain, which, Ooh. by the way, that sounds equally beautiful and terrifying. Beautiful during the day, 
terrifying, terrifying at, at night. night. Yes. Yep. I agree um, with that. You'd never even know a house was there unless you have been there before. With that being said, I keep the house locked at all times because if someone comes up the driveway that we weren't expecting, they probably shouldn't be there. Also, I'm convinced my house is haunted, so it's just a creepy place overall, which, by the way, you should just move. (laughs) I I feel like there's multiple reasons why you should leave. Yeah. I mean, it sounds gorgeous. Congratulations on your new place. I couldn't sleep. No, I could not sleep. I, it always blows my mind when people are like, yeah, I'm pretty sure my house is haunted. All these horrible things yeah. happen. I'm like, why are you there? I'd why be out the next I, day. Yeah. And like, the, oh, just the possibility. I mean, just we went snowboarding in the, and stayed in a cabin for a while. We were with a group of people. And tell me, tell me that is not the start of a horror film. Yeah. A group of friends that. goes up to the mountains. And I, was I woke cameras. up. I didn't tell you. Oh, no. What I happened? I woke up went downstairs and the side door was unlocked all night and Shut I up. lost it and I looked at Alicia and I was like I'm officially like going to check everything before I go to bed and I brought <laughs> I brought my taser with me I'm so proud of you <laughs> because I was like someone has to <laughs> like if I don't who will and then I like at the last moment was like okay I'm bringing it and I had it by my yeah. bed should we tase each other absolutely not but like, how do we know how it feels to know like we how know, to do Taryn, it? We know, okay. that's a terrible idea. Please okay. continue reading. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> everyone's like, what's it like living with Taryn? That right there is exactly <laughs> what it's like. Okay. Me shutting down. <laughs> no, <laughs> Taryn, we can't tase each other. Okay. Last week, my boyfriend worked late. So I just sw- swung by Little Caesars to get a cheese pizza and some cheesy... Oof. With some cheesy jalapeno sauce. Love Little Caesars. I felt a little sick after eating. <laughs> yeah. So I just laid That's down on it. the couch. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I ate all this food and now I'm going to like lay here and die. Um, uh, blah, blah, blah. I just laid on the couch to chill. All of a sudden, I heard a car door shut and I heard I hear someone on our porch. They started banging on the door and shining a flashlight in the windows. And I swear oh it sounded God. like they said, let me in. I lay there terrified and I froze. Well, duh. Um, I wasn't getting off the couch because there's a window in the front of the house that gives you a complete view all the way to the back of the house where I was, but I knew they couldn't see me on the couch. I texted my boyfriend freaking out and called my friend's husband, who is a cop, to see if he was patrolling near me and if anyone he knew was out so they could come over and check things out. About that time, I hear the car go back down the driveway. 30 minutes had passed, and my dog needed out. I looked out the window to see if the coast was clear and let my dog out. On my porch were three packages. (laughs) I essentially called the cops on UPS and successfully (gasps) terrified all members of my friends and family. It's fine. I'm fine. Oh, my (laughs) God. (laughs) The poor UPS. So what did he say if she thought he said, let me in? I don't know, but Packages. you know how sometimes he I've watched, and said UPS. I've watched on our camera, like I've watched where they'll come and they like knock and they just like say something. And I, first of all, I don't think there's anything wrong with just like not answering because that's like the easiest disguise you could have. All people you need have done that before is a cardboard box, and now with freaking or a brown Amazon um, Prime, what's the one where like they have. Straight up just Regular anyone. clothes. It's like next day yeah. Amazon Air. It's like some random person in their normal car. Totally. Drops it off and they ask for a signature and I'm like, who are you? And they just take a picture. Have you seen? Yeah. I, w- I was watching uh-huh. a guy on my parents ring one time and um, yeah, like they just, he just like pulled up in his little beat up car, comes out in like jeans and a t-shirt, like eating something and like puts the package down, takes a picture and walks away. So I don't think there's anything wrong with being safe and just- letting them especially when you're home alone yeah at nighttime when when everyone's home i feel safe walking out without checking yeah um but when i'm home alone mm -mm. Mm -mm. absolutely not i will not you will never catch me nope (laughs) nope Nope. (laughs) and and you know what if that means i get that little sticky note on the door saying you have to go pick it up well you know what i'm alive yeah (laughs) so who's the real winner so who is the real winner absolutely you won't get me today ted not today, the delivery Satan. man not today not today oh my gosh yeah um anyways but i thought that was an interesting turn it up. i'm i'm genuinely surprised that hasn't happened to me yet yeah or hasn't happened to us or alicia like wh- where you've like where freaked we've out like, and freaked the out cops. and it's yeah. just been like a package yeah that's funny yeah it's good good times. i'm surprised well uh, yeah yeah and then she had a dog with her which is nice yeah. Oh, it's always added nice to have security. A dog. Mm-hmm. Always nice. Um. But yeah. Do you want to go first today? Oh, absolutely. I'd love. I mean, to. I can too. But I just read. 
No, that's totally fine. Um, we are going to take a short break and then Ash is going to get into her story. Do you want to drop us like a title, a teaser? I would love to. Oh, bring it on. <clears throat> um, she went ahead and titled this, uh, gave it away. It's a she. <laughs> um, she titled it Prevalent Parent Problems. I love alliteration. Mm-hmm. That was perfect. I know. It literally, I was like, perfect. Du- click. Yep. Interested. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there's the the title drop. And we'll see you guys after the break. Sweet. Hey, guys, we just wanted to take a second to just say thank you for being a part of our little unsolicited advice family. We love you guys so much. And it would mean so much to us if you would rate, review, subscribe and share our podcast. Spread the word. Spread the love. Yes. Give advice to everyone. Advice for you. Advice for your mom. Advice change for your friends. Change the world. Friends. Change the world. <laughs> Help us get the word out there. And uh, yeah, that would mean so much to us. And uh, yeah. back to the show. That's insane. I just got a FedEx package this morning, and these are things that guys just don't think about. I, 100%. No, I was just talking to someone about like being a girl. The, the harsh reality that girls have to be freaking on their game all the time. All the time. Because all it takes is, I mean, if you think about it, especially if you're looking through a little peephole. Yeah. You know how you can't really see details? Or if you're looking, if you have a ring app, which, which everyone is like, oh, that's so much safer. It's still, you can't see details. All you see is a brown uniform or you see like the purple outfit um for fedex you know you can't really like tell exactly but they what it don't is. even need outfits no but that's what yeah literally if i was a murderer all i would need uh-huh. to purchase is obviously my weapon of choice yeah. or my bare hands because i would be really strong and <laughs> a freaking cardboard box yeah no and it's and it's, it's a thing it's a it's a legit thing i listened to this on i think i want to say it was my favorite murderer i don't remember the exact name of the serial guy but um you we have this thing we've been taught since infancy to trust authority and there was this guy that was running around in a like fake police uniform and women would believe that he was a cop he'd pull them over yeah and then wham bam kidnapped raped dead yeah and it's just like of course you would pull over for a cop if he says get out of the car roll your window down what are you gonna do you're gonna do it isn't that terrifying me and it's I, terrifying. Me this and is Ash what keeps us up at night. Just so many that we're like, we we know what to tell you. We also, know where the body should be buried. I don't know if you remember, but when we were, I, I feel like I've mentioned this like cabin trip that we went on for New Year's multiple times. Um, but we went on one, and a friend of ours was telling us about "Don't f with cats," the documentary. Oh, the documentary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched the first episode, and then I watched the second episode. And I'm freaking out. Oh, gosh. It is so good. But it's terrifying. It's terrifying, but it's so good. But it's amazing what people can do simply through the internet. Oh, God. It's no in a good way, but also a bad way, but also a good way. Because yeah. this guy gets caught by normal people like us who are on Facebook oh my and gosh, made a Facebook group. Terrifying. But it's like, it's terrifying. Well, I think, too, <sighs> like, we're like breathing heavy. <laughs> I think, too, people need to just like pay attention Mm -hmm. and to realize that there's things put in place. Like if you're, I've, I remember, I can't remember where I heard this, but someone was saying like, if you're getting pulled over and you even have a suspicion that you're not sure if it's a real cop, like call 911 and say, Hey, I'm getting pulled over. It's dark. I don't feel safe. Can you confirm that someone is Mm -hmm. like pulling me over 100% and then they'll either confirm like yes you're you know being pulled over it's in progress or they'll say like no but we're sending someone you know what I mean yeah and I think like we get so scared because they get on their speaker and they're like pull over now but the authority thing yeah but you have a right to be careful and I think like we need to remember that and not just be like Yes, ma'am. Yeah, whatever you say. Well, even Ted Bundy in that documentary, Mm -hmm. one of the girls, the one that got away, remember, he literally went up to her in the mall and said something like, oh, I can't, Mark, did you watch that? Said something like. He had, I think he had to interview her. He said like your car got broken into or something and then he he said, oh, I'm undercover. That's why, like, because he didn't have cop stuff. Yeah. And then had her come to his car. Yeah. And get in his car, which was like a like a bug, like a Volkswagen like yeah. bug. And is that what you call him? Bug? Mm-hmm. Um, Beetle. And then and then whatever. She ended up getting away. But that's like even just him saying, like, oh, I'm a cop. Like no, I, I need to talk to you. Like we got to be careful. You have to be careful. And you are it's very true. I was uh one of my exes was 
at the time trying to be a, a police officer. And I remember him telling me um, that you don't have to roll your window down. Yeah. And he was like, if they if you question it, like you can call. But like you technically do not have to roll your window down. Like it's not. Yeah. If you're scared, it's yeah. not illegal if you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. So I was like, oh, good to know. <sighs> Protect yourself. Protect Pro yourself. Protect yourself. That Thank was a you, little Mark. tangent, but also wow, what we are all we doing? To hear it. <laughs> Did we have we have you read a story? Have I? Nope. Oh shoot, okay. not at all. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, we digress, but you know, safety first. So someone out there probably needed to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes, fully. So all right, so that was a little bit of a tangent, but we're gonna get back on track. I got you guys. We're gonna get back on track mm -hmm. with our first story for today. Um, this one again, I already told you the title: prevalent parent problems. Um, I actually, whoa, it says prevalent parental problems. Oh, same, same diff. Same, but like I, I read that twice wrong. <laughs> it's fine, <laughs> which is interesting. Concerned for myself. Um, okay, <laughs> prev. <laughs> <laughs> prevalent parental problems um and we're gonna get into it this one's a little bit long but you know i double spaced it so Hit wish it. me luck oh okay dear taryn and ashley decided I, oh. to switch it up ha ha ah, ha guys thanks you guys put darren first we like that that's fine thanks. um but don't get me wrong it's ashley's first <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> Her eye, roll, her eye roll just now. Um, hey, y'all. Just wanted to start by saying, as everyone does, that I absolutely, positively am obsessed with y'all's podcast. I listen to it everywhere, never miss an episode, ah. and I always find myself laughing so hard from y'all's dynamic. Also... I apologize if you guys have to keep reading y'all. I'm from Southern Virginia, so it's a habit. Um, I think me and Turner are both getting a lot better at We're pronouncing that so correctly. Good. I think mm -hmm. we have a lot of fans in the South. I think we do. Um, Which I am we not do, mad about. We do read a lot of them. Yes. Um, that say y'all. So mm -hmm. I prefer to remain anonymous, but you can call me A for the purpose of this email. A. Like that a. show. What was that show? Oh, Pretty Little Liars. Pretty Little Liars. Creepy. Right? I immediately pictured a big red A. Anyways. Okay. <clears throat> now let's get into my story, shall we? Well, I'm currently a sophomore in high school and have grown up with strict parents my entire life. Both of my parents immigrated from a third world country from extremely poor families. They both had to work very hard to get to where they are, which pushed them to instill in me and all my siblings responsibility and a good work ethic. Even though I am incredibly grateful that they teach us the values of hard work, it doesn't mean that we have to have a perfect relationship. I am an Enneagram, Enneagram 9 wing 8, which means that I absolutely hate confrontation. Girl, same. Are you a wing 8 or two? 1? I'm a wing 1. Yeah, yeah, that's what I would guess. But apparently, I was reading about this, apparently um, most numbers will start at one wing and grow out of it and go to another wing. Is it like a constant like For ping example, pong type thing i don't think so oh. but i was reading more about my mom <laughs> side note my mom got me and my sister enneagram books one through nine like individual books oh, like know, a I'm whole series so i started my nine one um and it was basically explaining that if you're on one wing stereotypically most people will grow into the other wing i would say i would say i definitely started yeah no, I don't know. I think, and I, I, I really thought about this. I think I started on a wing one. I went through a real rough wing eight phase of my life and then bounced back to wing one. Interesting. I think that's where I'm at right now. But I did go through a very confrontational like period in my life. Yeah. So makes sense to me. But anyways, um, A is a, is a nine wing eight, which means that she absolutely hates confrontation. Same, but when I try to voice my opinion, I can come off as stubborn and angry. I try so hard to explain my thoughts, but I'm really bad with words, so it always comes off the wrong way. That means that fighting isn't an uncommon thing to hear in my house. My mom and I do it pretty much every day. With my dad, I don't really have a bad relationship with him. He's kind of quiet and also non-confrontational, but I'm not exactly super close with him. I'm not close with either of my parents, really. It's sad because I haven't truly said I love you to them in years. Sometimes I feel as if my mom wants me to act exactly like her because she's always saying things like, when I was your age, I was doing this, so you should be doing this too. Or, you have my genes, so you should be acting like this. And things of that sense. 
Whenever I do something she doesn't approve of, she, cu- she cusses at me and calls me hurtful names. It happens so often that words like worthless, hopeless, or etc. are numb to me now. Mm-hmm. I'm constantly being piled with extra schoolwork. I take dance for hours and hours a week. I'm involved in many extra extracurricular activities and I'm still expected to come home to chores homework and all of that other crap I wish I could be like the other girls and actually spend time with my friends but when I talk about spending time with my friends or if my mom sees me hugging them she always claims that I'm thinking of my friends um she always claims that I'm thinking my friends are more important than family which is not true my parents always push me to get into a good college and are doing everything they can to help me to have a good future. So far, I've skipped a grade. I've gotten into NSHSS, which I don't know what that is. Do you know what that is? National Honor something. Something like that. Society. I'm guessing so. Um, if you guys know, please tell us. Um, I'm not that smart. Um and a bunch of other academic things. It's great and all, and I honestly do appreciate everything my parents are doing for me, but sometimes I feel like it's all a bit too much. I've told them that my true dream is to be a principal dancer, which, again, I don't know what a principal dancer means, but I'm, I'm guessing like a higher level I'll look it up. paid dancer. But they think that it's a silly and stupid goal to have. Wait, I found it. Oh. So a principal dancer is a dancer at the highest rank within a professional dance company, particularly a ballet company. Oh. Dang, girl. So she's a good dancer. Um, She continues, I've always been known as the girl that smiles and laughs all the time, but the pressures being put on me at home leave me crying in bed after a long day of fake smiling. I honestly don't know what to do. I would just really like some advice. Thank y'all so much for reading my story. Lots of love. A. P.S. Not to leave it on a side note, I decided to leave y'all with a dad joke. LOL. Ashley, hope that you get this one. Just lost my job as a zookeeper. (laughs) In my defense, there were signs everywhere saying, please don't feed the animals. (laughs) So. (laughs) That was cute. I love the dad joke. I like ending things with dad jokes. It's funny. Uh, Um, You good? (laughs) Yeah. Uh, I feel like that was really heavy. Yeah. I feel really bad. Um. I feel like this isn't something that I that I dealt with, but I, I have had friends, especially in high school, where I knew their parents had moved to the States and worked so hard to give their their kids um, a good opportunities and a, a good education. Um, so I can understand how that would be really difficult. Yeah. Um, and how that pressure could be put on you could yeah. be overwhelming at times. Um. I definitely think there were a lot of things in there that are not okay, like yeah. how she's called names and things like that, mm-hmm. how you are called names, sorry. Um, that's, ugh, name calling is such a horrible thing, and it's so powerful what words can do to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think, like, that's something you need to pay attention to make sure, like, you're okay, and... It's hard with parents because you can address stuff and sometimes it doesn't change. Something I know that's that's helped me um, in areas where I'm I might like disagree with my parents is remembering that the context that they grew up and formed their like values and beliefs is completely different than mine. Yeah. And it's something where I think like there there should be a little bit of grace given to them to be like, oh, you didn't grow up in an era where like every single song has like cuss words and like all these different ideas are out there and people are pursuing like all these different dreams and nobody really knows what they're doing like Mm -hmm. uh, things were a lot different back then and I can't even imagine too coming from like a completely different country and and working so hard to get here yeah so sometimes like when I am having like disagreements if I can step into that mindset and be like okay we're obviously disagreeing because we come from two different worlds. So like, let me try to sit and like hear with that perspective and try to do a j- good job of not just being like, well, this is what I want to do, but actually sitting and like explaining why I want to do it and yeah. why it's important to me. Oh my God, that's exactly what I was going to say. So I think for me um, with my parents, which I'm, I don't think we were on the same page as far as growing up and how we talked with our parents, but for me, if I ever wanted something specifically, I'm thinking of um, 
when I told my parents that I wanted to drop out of college, Mm -hmm. um, I didn't just say, I hate school. I want to drop out of college. And I'm not saying you would talk like that, but um, I didn't just drop a bomb on them. Me and my sister have always been very, what's the word? I feel like my parents raised me and my sister to be like, if you want something, like prove it. Yeah. So if I wanted to drop out of college, which is something that most parents don't want to hear their kids say. Yeah. Um, I had to explain how I was going to essentially survive. Yeah. Because I was like, okay, I'm not doing well in school. I One of my points was I was like, I'm wasting your money. I'm wasting my money. Yeah. You know? Um. I feel like right now, since I don't know what I'm doing, it would be better for me to work and to work hard and to work full time, yeah. not part time, not a a little little job that's minimum wage. I'm going to work really hard and get a job that pays above minimum wage so that I can pay for rent, so that I can pay for my car, so that I can do all these things. Yeah. Um, and presented it to them almost as a presentation. Like, here's why you should let me quit school. Yeah. And I think my parents really appreciated that because it proved to them that I knew what I was talking about, that I did my research and that I'm an adult enough and mature enough to still give them to, to present what I want and still let them make that decision. Does that make sense? Oh, totally makes sense. And it sounds to me like, I don't know your parents obviously, but I feel like if you presented something to them, for example, if you love dance, um, explain to them how if you work really hard at your grades and you continue to hold the standard that they have set for you, will they allow you to then continue pursue dance on the side? If, yeah. if you're like, what are the requirements you, uh, that's what I would say. If I was you, I'd ask my parents, what are the requirements you want me to meet? Once I've met them, if I continue to meet them, can I still continue yeah. pushing dance on the side? Or, Hey, Here's here's the requirements you've set. I've been meeting them. I will continue to meet them. All I'm asking for from you is time with friends. Yeah. Like that's important to me. I understand that it wasn't important to you and that's fine, but not everyone is okay without those kinds of relationships. Yeah. I need them. So if I don't budge this, can I please have more friend time? I feel yeah, like they would be more receptive if you present yeah. it in that way. Well, and also like I mean creating a healthy balance so maybe you know it sounds like right now it's a lot of family time that's just maybe unhealthy like there's a lot of fighting there's a lot of like you know kind of claustrophobic yeah like I want to go but you want me here so I'm here and I'm upset and like things like that so maybe trying to create and you know sitting with your parents and being like hey you guys are always going to be my priority Mm -hmm. but I do need like I need good relationships I need to pursue this thing that like is a passion of mine so like making things more intentional so when you do have a family day have a freaking family day like don't bring bring out the games like have conversation like go out and see a movie go on a walk do things you know your parents are into and like create family days so that then when you have friend days it's not it's not this like competition it's just more of like Obviously, I'm I love you guys and I want to have I want to be more intentional with the time I have, but I also need to like invest in these other relationships, too. Yeah. And and I think what's cool and another way to look at it is almost all relationships are going to work this way. You have to show them that they're a priority um, so that they feel secure in, in your love and in your their relationship with you for you to be able to go out and do other things. Yeah. You know, so it's like me and Taryn wouldn't have been this close in our friendship if I just like bounced and never talked to her or, or would only show up every once in a while yeah, or, you know, that kind of stuff. I had to really like make her a priority and let her know that like you are one of my best friends and I am going to prioritize you for her to be and feel strong in that friendship. So I feel like your parents would feel the same way and your friends would do the same thing. So if you tell your parents, Hey, I know you don't think I prioritize you. The truth is I do. What can I do to make you feel more prioritized so that I can have time with my friends as well? Because maybe they don't even realize that their feelings are hurt, you know, and that would give them a chance to say, "Okay, I want a family dinner every Thursday night with you with you there and and no phones, no friends, no nothing. Yeah. Um, If we do that, then 
you could say yes oh I'll do God, that <laughs> Um, if that's like if that's what they said, then you could say, OK, that works on Fridays after school. Can I hang out with my friends? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it's good. I think communication is key. And I mean, I could be totally naive to the world of dance, but I think from like my friends who were dancers, like there are like auditions that happen and there's companies you try out for. And so there there are like kind of these lines you go up to that you can't really keep going unless you do that. Mm -hmm. So it could be something where you two talk to your parents about like, you know, if they're like, you can't make a living off this being like, you know what? Yeah, there is a really big possibility that like I don't make it, but I have to try. Like I have to at least try. So I am going to work hard. I'm going to try for this audition. But here are my plan B's. If like if it's not meant to happen, this is also what I have worked out. Like Ashley was saying, I think just like coming with like openness, but also showing like, no, I'm prepared to work for this. Like I'm not just sitting in the back being like, oh, yeah, it'd be really cool to be a professional dancer, but I'm not like aware of what it would take. Yeah. Think it through and make it clear. I'm not quitting school. My grades aren't going to drop. Everything's going to stay the same. I just want to do this on the side. Yeah. I'm not saying dance will be my major or my career. Yeah. It'd be nice if it is, but like. It, I, it's not something I'm going to pursue in that way unless like it takes off. Yeah. So but um, I can really relate to her the whole like faking the smile and being exhausted. Like yeah. I I think when you set a precedent of being like a happy person, like I know I struggle with that even like if I walk into a room and I'm like straight face, people are like, what's that? Yeah. Look at Taryn. Like, is she fine? Like what's yeah. happening? You know? So I think like um, – it's okay and that's cool that people see you as that happy person and I think in life sometimes like it is easier to just put on a smile and realize like I'm dealing with my own thing but like I just either not that I don't want to put this on you but like I like I don't need to have a conversation with you about it so I'm just gonna put on a smile get through whatever Mm -hmm. but I think you do need to be careful that you are have those outlets to get out those real emotions because it sounds like your only outlet right now is like going in your bed and crying after a long day yeah. um, which is healthy like I'm glad you're getting that out but I think you do need to find those people you can be real with and be like dude today was so hard and this is why you know yeah Um, I feel like as your uh, fellow nine um, dealing with those emotions suck and the problem is like we don't know as nines we, we aren't really comfortable with talking about them so it usually does come out in like a blubbering mess and um, if you don't have someone comfortable that you feel safe with talking about then you just end up being very emotional in your room yeah um first of all like that's very normal for a lot of people um and i mean i've fully been there but Um, something that I learned that really helps me because I am a non-confrontational person and I'm really bad at at explaining my personal feelings, writing it out has been like the game changer. I'm not kidding. If you have to write your mom or your dad a letter explaining all of this, then do it. I don't think it's, uh, less impactful in any way. It might even be more helpful for them and you because it takes all emotion out of it. It's all on paper. So you can maybe even write down this presentation (laughs) for lack of a better word hand it to them and then say when you're ready to talk like I'm I'm ready so that way they can come into the conversation being like fully aware of how you feel already does that make sense I feel like that's really that's really been helpful for me in my friendships and in my relationships with my parents because I've written it out beforehand so that I knew what I was going to say before I talked to them yeah and then I've also written it out and handed it to people and just been like when you're ready, I'll be over here, you yeah, know, because yeah, yeah. it's not something I want to do, but I'm forcing myself to do it. So maybe write it out. Yeah. Maybe if you do have a friend that's close to you, maybe talk about it with them and let them read it before handing it over to your parents. That yeah. could help. No, I totally agree. Great Babe, advice. A, we are so excited um, for you. Hopefully this works. I ho- really hope that was helpful for you. Yeah. Um, and shed those names. Those names don't have power over you. Yeah, those Mm-mm. the name dropping thing is, um, it's cowardly and it's it's really inappropriate. So, um, you can shake that off. Mm-hmm. Shake it off. Shake it off. Big twist. Twee Swift. Big Why twee can't Swift. I talk today? Big T Swift. Swift fan. Um, but yeah, and and definitely don't don't lose sight of your dreams because. Yes. Um, those are important. So good luck with everything, A. Yes. Um, if you have any updates in the future, feel Send free to over. let us know. 
Yes. Uh, cool. Well, that was my story. We're going to take a break really quick. Taryn, yeah. do you have a title you want to um, share with us? I, do I? That you want to like I drop do. so we can think about it I during do. our break? I'm going to need I'm one I'm really second. stalling for you right now. I was trying. I was really trying. Okay. Got it. Fake friends showing fake love to me. Oh, dang. You know what that is, right? Bold. Blunt. It's a song? Uh-huh. Oh, shoot. It's a rap song? I got fake people showing fake love to, to me. me. Straight up to my face. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know who sings it. Straight up Drake. to my face. Okay. Drizzy. Oh, I knew my it was a rap squeeze. song. I knew it was a rap song. Yeah. Name. I'm bad with names. That's Anyways. why it caught me. <laughs> got it. Uh, let's go ahead and take a break. Cough drop in. Cough drop in. I'm ready to go. Okay. I'm like, I'm not sick anymore. I'm past it. But guys, I cannot shake this cough. Also, I have multiple lymph nodes that are swollen, <laughs> which is a bad sign. <laughs> we got a doctor appointment scheduled. Don't <laughs> we're worry. Gonna, we're going to be okay. Um, we're going to get into Taryn's story in a second. But I just really quickly wanted to remind you guys, if you haven't subscribed to us yet, please subscribe, share, yes. like, rate, review, send it to all your friends. Mm-hmm. Um follow us on all the socials we have instagram we have twitter we have facebook we have youtube we have it all so follow us on everything we'll we'll talk to you there it's yes. fun we have a great time chatting with you guys so we do. chat it up chat it up okay um i think i can say it. nope just kidding it's anonymous well, you really need to work okay on but that. i've been writing it on a paper but since we didn't print it mm-hmm. i don't you know what keep your judgment mm-hmm. to yourself side eye side okay. coming from me Again, this is titled, (laughs) Wow. Fake Friends Showing Fake Love to Me. Straight up to my face. Okay. Hi, girls. First, I just wanted to say that I love you guys and I love your podcast. We love you. We love you. And we love that you love us. It makes my boring job way more entertaining every Monday. Ha ha. Mondays are the worst. That's why we chose Monday. (laughs) I literally put ha ha at the end of almost every text I send. You know what? Wow. I had the same realization the other day. Literally. Everything. I'm not kidding. And I, I was like, does this help me or does this like not help me? And then I had this whole moment where I was like, I'm going to stop. I think every time in my mind I do a, <laughs> Yeah. I have a ha ha. <laughs> well, I just want to make it very clear that I'm being funny, but it's like. Also, if you can't tell I'm funny. If I'm saying funny, I can't be that funny in every single yeah. text, you know, so it's pick and choose your battles. Oh, it's bad. Anyways. It's so bad. We digress. Um, okay. I would like to keep my name anonymous for this story. Please, your wish is my command. So I was really close to this girl. Let's call her Gigi. And I've known, um, she's known her since freshman year of high school. I'm currently a junior in college. We connected after graduating and we're practically inseparable ever since. We even spent holidays together and got each other gifts as friends usually do. I know. Cute. Um, So fast forward a few months into the summer, I noticed Gigi was distancing herself a lot from me. It confused me because we were so close and all of a sudden we were not. When I asked to make plans with her, she seemed to be too busy or have an excuse with school or work. Um, Even when I confronted her about it, she told me she couldn't always agree to plans with me because she was busy doing other things too. Gigi had barely contacted me throughout the summer and I felt I was the only one making an effort in our friendship. Then my family member became very sick and passed away. This is when Gigi sprung out of the shadows and sent me a cliche condolence message. I assumed we were on good terms again, but after the short text message, she never checked up on me again. Aren't friends supposed to look after you when you've had a tragic loss? Um, yes is the answer, by the way. I mean, that's what I assumed. I even noticed that Gigi would make plans with other people and not with me. Seeing her social media posts made me so upset that I literally blocked her on everything. It made me so angry to see her with other people when she swore she was so busy. Now my question is, is it right for me to feel heartbroken by this? Was it right to cut ties with someone who wasn't showing me the same treatment anymore? I hope this makes it into your podcast because I'm sure there are a lot of people who have gone through this as well. Friends can break your heart too. But as they say, everything happens for a reason. I also chose this title because it's a line from a Drake song, who I adore, same girl, same. Um, very suiting for my story. Ha ha, thank you, and love you. 
That breaks my heart. Uh, That's so sad. It's very true. Friendship breakups are far worse worse than any relationship breakup you go through. I would say just we get sent like a ton of dating questions and like heartbreak stories. Mm -hmm. Um, And I would say like a close second is friends, Friends. like friendships friendships coming to an end. It we've both been through it. We've talked about it on here. It seriously is such a heartbreaking thing. It's really tragic. And it's, it's a like bitter truth that I've had to come to terms with. And I feel like most people have to come to terms with is that friends come and go in your life. Um, friends a lot of friends are there for a season um and then sometimes they're gone and yeah. they might be gone for forever um it's it's really hard but for me personally with a friendship that I've lost I landed on um this idea that um I think I really needed her in school and I think she really needed me in school. And I think we were there for each other. I was there for her through her parents' divorce. Um, she was there for me because, like, school was rough for me. Also, like, like friends came and went. But, like, she was always there. Like, she was always, like, this, like, rock in my life. And I feel like I was that for her. And we got each other through school. Yeah. And, like, we survived. And we ended up going our separate ways now. But that doesn't mean we wish any ill on each other. No. I think it means that um, our lives took us in different places. And I look at where she's at today. I look at where I'm at today. And it's so far, like, it's so separate. It's so different. Yeah. So it makes sense that I'm not friends with her anymore. Um, But I can look back at that time and be like, wow, like, we were great friends. Yeah. And we enjoyed so many years together. Um, So I um, have really landed and on, like, this idea of just, like, loving what it was. Yeah. And being grateful that I got to experience it. Um, and thankful that I can share those memories with her. Oh, totally. I mean, honestly, every relationship or encounter you have with people, you can totally grab and learn something from it, even like the worst (laughs) situations, you know? Yeah. Um, It teaches you something, and even those people that, like, break your heart and make you have to start over, like, it teaches you strength and um, learning how to be dependent on yourself. Mm -hmm. So... I don't think I need to pull this back up, but I think one of the questions you asked is, um, is it right to for you to feel heartbroken? Yeah. First of all, you know how we feel. Mm. Every emotion, you have a right to every single emotion mm-hmm. that you could ever feel. So to feel heartbroken, like it's not a matter of is it right or not. It's what you feel. You're so feeling it is it. right. Yeah. It's real. And I'm telling you right now, like I fully relate and obviously Ash does too. Um, there's a couple other things like the whole cliche reaching out. And that's a hard one because I've even had where it's like something has happened to someone who's not in my life anymore. But when I, it's, I, you still have those like feelings of for them that like they were someone important to you. Mm -hmm. So you do, I've done that where I've reached out and just been like, I'm so sorry for your loss. I think the difference is in this friendship, it's still very unresolved and fresh of like, like, bro, where did you go? You know what I mean? Exactly. So that's where it's like, okay, you reach out for this, but like, you're still not willing to like, see if I'm okay. And like, be a part of my life. And it sounds like you guys have not had a closure conversation of like, why this is happening, or she's not willing to be honest about it is what it sounds like. So that's, that's where it's, it's hard. And I would take it as obviously, she wouldn't reach out if she didn't care. Mm -hmm. So um like she does care about you and she does care about like I'm sure she knew that family member if she was that close with you. But um, for whatever reason, something is causing the friendship to be adrift. And yeah. and I think it sounds like you need that closure, but it also is always a possibility that you're not going to get it. <laughs> it's a huge possibility. Yeah. I think um, the thing the thing here is that um, some people – just don't know how to admit that they have or or did something wrong yeah. um so i think with some people the problem is like they aren't aware of their fault yeah in in it and and or turn a blind eye to it so they're just they're they're physically like not capable of being a friend to you like at that time yeah does that make sense so i i think they can't some people and they probably don't even know why can't be your friend 
And yeah. it doesn't mean anything against you. It doesn't mean anything against them. Maybe it's a bad fit. Maybe they were friends with you and they're going past it. But I think her actions right now speak a lot. Mm-hmm. And I think that is kind of your answer. And it's kind of a low blow that she can't tell that to tell you that to your face. Yeah. Um, but what I would do and something I've always kind of defaulted to is I would do absolutely everything in my power to make it very clear that I tried. And yeah. I would say, you know what, if that's how you feel and you're not going to respond to me, I'm going to respond or comment or call you three more times to make it very clear that you ended this friendship, not me. Yeah. Like I wanted this to last. So I tried my hardest. If you're still not going to respond, then I'm bowing out. Yeah. Like I have pride in myself and I have dignity. And if you're not going to respond, that's your choice. Yeah. But if she's not responding, I would take that as an answer. If you want to be very clear and make it very clear to her, then maybe try one more time. Yeah. Give her a chance. If she doesn't show up then that's on her Ugh. and that's uh, like getting closure when you have to do it on your own is mm-hmm. so hard it sucks. it's not fair and I've had that before where I've had to like mourn or get over a loss of a relationship whether it's with a guy or a friend or whatever and when you can't sit down and have that like I love closure conversations where you can it's just so be healthy. like let's just lay it out it's like so healthy it's and, necessary and even though a lot of times those conversations are really hard to hear like to hear someone say like well this is why like I just don't mm-hmm. want to be with you or whatever but it is it's just like a release you can have of like well at least I know yeah you know it's the not knowing of like we were best friends. Like, yeah. where did you go? Like, yeah. why are you hanging out with all these other people, but you won't even check up on me when you know I'm going through a hard time? Yeah. Um. So I would work on, you know, like Ash said, like reach out, be like blunt and honest of like, hey, like, I know you're saying nothing's wrong, but like, I, I clearly feel like something's wrong. Like, I don't ever see you. Like, I would love to talk about it. Like, I would love to like, discuss what happened yeah. but if she's not willing to then that's where you got to step in and, and you got to kind of do it on your own which I don't know the right answer I don't know if anyone does but I think yeah. it's just you know taking time and healing and and you know I don't ugh, I it's so yeah. messy it's so hard yeah and the no response thing it really sucks for you but I think it's I think it's a huge glimpse of her personality and I think it's a huge red flag and I think it's very cowardly of her I do and it's rough and I don't want to like push this when you're already feeling low but like I feel like she's she wouldn't be a good friend for you right now no she will not talk to you too because I mean after a closure conversation yes it's hard but you still respect the person for telling you to your face yeah being sitting you down After a couple dates or if you've been dating for a while and being like, hey, like, I love you. I care about you, but I don't see this going anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, You're heartbroken. No, you don't want to see them for a while. But it's like, thank you for telling me. No, it's, you know, it's still there's admiration. If people don't do that, you don't want them in your life. And I know you'll you'll know who I'm talking about. But there's been like multiple people who've talked about how they were like great friends with someone Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they're completely cut out of each other's lives yeah mortal enemies and no conversation has been had of like zero zero that's so weird and maybe it's because i have like diarrhea of the heart and i just want to freaking like tell everyone how i feel and like yeah (laughs) you know what i mean like like, explode on them yeah ashley probably gets this more than anyone because i'm always like love me i don't feel loved by you (laughs) make eye contact walk up and just stare at me and be like you haven't talked to me in like hours or sometimes I'll come and I'll be like, good morning. And she'll look and be like, hi. And I'll be like, good morning. And I she'll need be a like, moment. I said it. But I need it's to like, drink my entire coffee yeah. before I can respond. Oh, no. You, in full anybody sentences. who has been in relationship, whether it's friendship or the one person who has been in like a dating relationship with me, knows that I'm very like, you know exactly what I need and want. Yeah. Because I just like love emotions and psychology and like all that stuff. Yeah. But. That's why these situations blow my mind. How you can literally cut someone out of your life without having even the decency to say, I'm cutting you out of my life because A, B, and C. Yeah, and here's what I've learned. I'm going to take it back to the Enneagram for a second. Yes, some people like me hate confrontation um, and don't want to talk to you to your face. Like, it's true. Like, I'd rather break up with someone over text, of course, like anyone else than in person. It's a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. but I think the truth is it comes down to caring for someone. Yeah. So 
What's hard for me and what's hard for Taryn, obviously, and for most of us, is when someone cuts you off completely without saying anything, did they ever care? Yeah. And that's what's hard to hear. Yeah. And that's what's hard to deal with. But if that's the case, that should be something that pushes you even farther away from that person because if they didn't care yeah, and you thought they did that whole time, that's very sketchy. And yeah. And that's not a person you want in your life. No. Relationship-wise, friendship-wise, anything. Like, you don't want that. Yeah. And I get why she's like, I feel like when you experience a loss, and at least, like, when I've experienced tragedy or anything like that, it really, like, opens up your perspective. And it you're does. like, I don't have time to chase after you. <laughs> like, yeah. life is short, and I want to send it with people I love. So yeah. I think, honestly, like, sometimes... God gives us these little situations where it's like laid out in front of us and it's like very clear, like, okay, like she's not supposed to be in my life for whatever reason. And that just means honestly, like sometimes a door has to shut for another one to open. Exactly. And all my best friends now would never have happened if I was still in that best friendship with the person who like shattered my heart back in the day. You know what I mean? 100%. So I would just say, I fully feel you and I'm hugging you through the mic. Mm -hmm. Um, But more in that loss, appreciate her for what she was and open yourself up to find those people who deserve to be loved by you. Yeah, I think getting rid of a friend is one of the hardest things someone can deal with. Um, But it does like physically, like emotionally, mentally getting rid of that person opens up a space for you to have another friend. Yeah. So um, I know it's hard right now because you're heartbroken and you're frustrated with her, but I would actually start getting excited and looking forward to, and also at the same time, like keeping your eyes open for a new best friend, um, for a new multiple friends even, or a completely new friend group um, that is there and the opportunity is there and you didn't see it because you had, you had a best friend. Yeah. Now that you don't, you have availability and you can keep your eyes open for a new one. Cool. Yeah. I'm pumped you're, for you. Your Ashley or your Taryn is right around the corner. She's right around the corner <laughs> and I'm so excited oh, for you. We're so and, cute. And they're going to care about you. Yes. I That's agree. what we need to make sure of. Yes. Cool. Um, well, awesome. thank you for writing that in. Yeah. Thank you guys as always. Um, if you guys have stuff you want to send in. Please do. Please do. This is and very it can therapeutic be like, for us. <laughs> honestly, I feel like a lot of stuff has been like heavy. It doesn't have to be, but obviously uh-uh. we love to tackle it. Yeah. Fun fact, we thought this was going to be a, a more funny podcast. <laughs> yeah. And it is because we're hilarious. We're a but, great time. Yeah. If you guys have like weird situations where you're like, oh, like this happened at work. It was so weird. Or like my brother did this and I don't know what to do. We love yeah. all of the situations. Embarrassing moments. We haven't had a lot of those. Yeah. Minus the tearing it up. So I feel like that kind of took over. But. Yeah. Also, like uh, the other day on social, someone brought up the October series again. And yeah. I did a poll. This was a while ago. I did a poll on like if people still miss it. Everyone missed it. So even if you have scary stories, like send it in. It does. It's just because yeah. it's not October doesn't mean we won't read it. We'll read everything, especially if we can advise people on how not to get killed. Because we're really good. I feel at like that. we're actually very educated in that. So. I am. I am. Let's freaking go with the scary Let's stories. Freaking go. Let's do it. Yeah. Um. I have a dad joke that. Yeah, you do. Really freaking good, and I'm excited about so it. So excited. Okay. Where to go? <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay. What does a nosy pepper do? A nosy pepper? Yeah. Uh, run? Run? Cause, oh, cause you're thinking spicy like Spicy peppers run. make your nose run? No, nosy. Nosy peppers. Can I just say it? Oh, yeah. It gets jalapeno business. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one, right? That's a really I good love one. That one. Jalapeno business. Jalapeno business. That's just like so us. Good. We're jalapeno business. Always. But, you know, it's by invitation, because you sent us your story. So. You know, yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> so proved all of this. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. We'll talk to you guys in the next episode, which will be coming at you Monday or whenever you listen Should to us. Should we tell them? Tell them what? Oh, my God. Should we? No. Okay. Should it Never be a mind. surprise? There's a surprise next week. Tune in. And that's all we have to say about that. I whispered it. Mark, if it's too loud, just cut it out. Because we don't want to give all the grains away. Grains? <laughs> I don't know where you're going with this. I don't either. Okay, we're okay, cutting. Okay, we love we're you out. guys. Love Bye. you guys. Bye. Bye.